Welcome to Toy Hole Studio. My name is Kendall Kessler. I've decided after doing a couple of whimsical paintings on paper towels to get back to my Skyline Beauty series. And this is Dallas, Texas. And I'm going to do a number of them and different views and things. But what I'm going to try to do with this one is just to stay within the silhouette thing, thing I've got here. In fact, I didn't mean to put those in, but I uh, may leave them in, may, may go over them. But I'm going to try real hard not to do anything else with the rest of the canvas, which is hard for me because to me, white just kind of overpowers all colors. But I've got an idea in mind, and I may, of course later, may finish the whole thing, but I will have prints of the first layer with just a silhouette available. So I'm going to use a very small brush and as always, I've got some things in mind, but I never know what's going to happen with these whimsical YouTube paintings, so we'll just see what happens. But I did want to really let the paint move around. If it drips too much, I may be going into the rest of it. I'm not going to be doing any water. If I do the large one, well, large one, okay, if I do finish the whole canvas, I am going to be very whimsical. I'm not going to do water. I'm just going to just really play with it and have some fun, which I have a feeling is most likely what's going to happen. Now I want these colors to move around, so I need to add more water, and I didn't have much water at first. I want them to really just mesh together and get some interesting systems going. And I was considering more of a pastel effect, too. No, I just barely started. But I did want them to just flow together in more of a pastel look. Now it's getting more what I want. And I always try to keep these under 20 minutes, so can't go too slow. Using a small brush it is going to take a lot longer, but I can always pick up a larger brush. Yeah, I wanted to just get that really soft, soft look. I'm not Real strong colors, but not super strong colors. And just let, let that work. That's something different for me, it really is, because uh, I like to use the whole canvas. If you've watched any of mine before, you know that I've said many times that white is a combination of all colors. And I've also said that people don't believe that unless they get all the colors together, mix them in even amounts, and watch it go to white. So it it overpowers, didn't mean to get out there, it overpowers all other colors. Now you may not think that, but I do. And I think it's safe to say most artists think it really does happen. So when you take away all the white, then the colors exist better on their own, I think. Oh, this, you know, this is kind of what I would plan to do, so that's nice. If you've watched mine, you, you heard me say a lot of times, that's not what I expected at all. That's not what I wanted. That's not what I planned. And it just takes off by itself. Also, you've heard me say that it's not my main stuff, that I do very whimsical things for YouTubes. But my main stuff is very, very complex paintings, mostly the Blue Ridge, oil paintings that take a long time over a lot of layers. But in these, I like to just really kind of play around. And it's not that I don't think this is good art or anything, but it's just a more whimsical and more spontaneous. I might have to get a bigger brush. I've already gone quite a few minutes. But um, I just wanted to really get a complicated system going. If I use a big brush, I might just kind of fill it in too quick. But I really like what happened with that first building. Okay, and I didn't expect it to bleed that nicely, so that's good. I think the last one I did with the paper towel, it turned out good. It was a face. Oh, please look at my others. And that one turned out good. And the first one I did was like, oh, this is not what I expected at all. I was expecting so much more bleeding. I mean, my God, I was using a paper towel. And it didn't happen. I was real surprised that it held the water and the paint that well. Okay. Yeah, I'm starting to really like this. I've noticed with all these whimsical paintings, there's never too much yellow. Don't ask me why. Or this real pretty blue that I have. For some reason, they just work really well with my whimsical works, my just spontaneous works. And I'm just really big on pinks and purples and magentas. Oh yeah, that works real good. Yeah, well, I'm real surprised. 
maybe it's because of the black outline, probably is, that it's not bothering me with the white around it. Because usually it's like, oh no, that white is just taking over and I'm not really noticing my systems of color. But um, not this time. I bet it is the black, because black accents all color. That's why stained glass is so fascinating with the light coming in. The sections between the glass are just coming out as black. And that just really accents the color. I always like to wear black because I don't have a lot of color. I'm kind of a pale person. And when I wear black, it brings out the color in my skin better than when I wear other colors. I don't like to wear white at all. <laughs> really, that's, I don't have a lot of color and white just overpowers color. So you don't see me wear much white. Also, unlike most people, I can't keep it clean. Uh, you know, I'm not coming in here wearing a white shirt painting or anything, but... I just, I cannot keep white clean. I remember a long time ago, I decided I was going to buy something white. I mean, you know, it's nice, and I was going to buy some kind of a culotte or whatever they call it now, pants thing, and put it on as soon, I mean, just about as soon as I had them on, I had a spot on them. And you, it's so hard to get that out. Boy, I'm really pleased. And time's going pretty well. So this is working out fairly well. Turn a stronger green there. I'm a little sorry they went out of line there. I might just kind of add a little black there so it's not out of line. But uh, I think this is turning out real nice. It's just nice to look at. Art is such a fun experience. So I always tell people it's um, even when you're doing representational work, work pretty much the way it looks, you're still experimenting. I mean, there are a few artists that have very definite formulas for what they do. But I think it's safe to say that most artists do not. And they notice what's happening as they paint and just make decisions about it. Because things just do happen. I remember one teacher saying, and I agree with him completely, after a while the painting starts talking to you. <laughs> you talk to it at first and you have these ideas and all, and then the painting starts saying, hello, look at this, look at this, I think this is working good, whatever. My last one did that a lot. Um, doing one of wintergreen, a sunset off of a, an overlook there. It's a beautiful resort. And there was a certain light that I was just, just fascinated with, the way it was hitting the ridge and the warm and the cool colors. And wanted to get that, and I feel like I did. Took a lot of layers, but um, I changed the spacing. Most of my Blue Ridge paintings come from photographs that I take, but I'm not, it's not photorealism. I don't want to perfectly reproduce the photograph. That's not what my art is about. But I did change the spacing quite a bit. And after a while, it was like saying, uh-oh, you may have, it might have been better to stick a little closer to what exactly what was there. But I wanted to bring out one of the structures in the mountain, some distant house or something. And I wanted to make it a little larger so that you could see it better. So I did, and then I realized, oh, it's not working real well with the rest of it. Now I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but if you painted, you'd understand. <laughs> Believe me, you'd understand. So I realized I had to go back to the size that it, that it was and not change that. There's a saying that probably I've heard, that I've heard for a long time and didn't understand until I really got into painting, that artists use artistic license. And that may, I always thought that sounded strange. Why do you need to change things? And then I, as I started to paint a lot, I started to realize, well, yeah, it's a system of colors and textures and lines and whatever within a given field, a rectangle, circle, whatever you're using, and it makes a big difference how they're all presented. And sometimes what you're looking at needs something else. It's just not working that well in your your system in your rectangle or square or whatever. It's just not working that well. And artists change things. And like Monet, I'm always mentioning Monet, one of my heroes, I do elaborate on the colors. I work real hard to work with warm and cool colors and bring them out very strongly. But um, sometimes it's not exactly what I'm looking at. I'm bringing it out, elaborating, as he said, just making things look as good as they can look. And it's a, a really fun experience. 
That may sound real strange, but that's, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about artistic license. I used to think it was just the weirdest term. Okay, I'm, I think this is coming along really nicely. I might just leave it and not do anything with the rest of the canvas. Because I just think it's just um, a very, as usual, it's not really what I started with, not what I was thinking about to do, but it turned into its own little thing. What's uh, When you let the colors bleed, then you really don't know what's going to happen. That is one of the reasons watercolors is such a difficult medium, and I'm kind of doing that. I'm doing this even though I'm using acrylics. I'm really doing it as a watercolor. It's such a difficult medium because you don't know what's going to happen to areas that are bleeding until they finally dry. You think that you do, but no, they just keep on moving around until they're finally dry. So you can imagine what it's like if you're working with a sky or something, or clouds or whatever, which are extremely hard in watercolors. The, uh, a lot of people consider Winslow Homer to be the very best at watercolors. He could make the white of the paper become a cloud. He was amazing. He figured out how to go around the paper and make it come out as light shapes. Well, I am very, very surprised <laughs> that this turned out as nicely as it has. I might just hit a few more dots. Like I said, never too much yellow. And then I might just quit and I might leave it. I always like to get as much nice accents as possible. I know, I might, what I probably, probably do is use the same view again. And in the next one, I'll do something similar to this and then I will cover the whole canvas. Is I think I might just leave this. And since I am using decent materials this time, unlike paper towels and cheap paper and a lot of my other YouTubes, the original will be for sale. And if it is sold, I will take white paint to go over the canvas because canvas can be dirtied. So I will completely cover that up. And that would be good because there's a little place right through there which I can cover up. And of course, prints will also be available. So be sure to click on the link to see the final painting. I have a feeling this is exactly what it's going to be. And thank you for watching. There are a lot of other links to my artwork in the description.